Lightroom 6 can now take a series of photos and put them together as one HDR picture. In this video I will explain the general procedure followed by a few practical tips. My name is Heiko Neumeyer. You can use 5 or 9 shots for one HDR result. But here in Lightroom just 2 shots will often do as well. We are here in the library and I select 2 files. Otherwise you could also select a stack. Then you open the new sub-menu Photo, Photo Merge, HDR. Besides HDR you also see the new Panorama command here. The HDR command and the Panorama command are used in similar ways. And you will also find these two commands in the context menu after a right click. Here is a first preview. And this is what you can do in the new HDR dialog box within Lightroom 6. You can pan and zoom a bit. But this is not the original size and result here. It is a smaller preview. And the options to the right. By Auto Align, Lightroom makes all shots congruent so that they perfectly overlap. Definitely use this if you shoot your HDR exposers handheld without a tripod. And you get four different amounts of deghosting. This avoids blurred areas where people, leaves or waves may have moved. Usually it's a good option. And click Autotone for a first automatic contrast correction. There is no fine tuning for this contrast. No sliders and no curves. All this you will do later in Lightroom's develop section with the usual commands. HDR results from Lightroom will never give you crazy colors and weird contrasts. They look rather naturally. And while in Photoshop's Merge to HDR Pro you may get some color artifacts. The HDR result in Lightroom remains rather clean. But this is not yet the final result. Click on Merge at the bottom right. Now Lightroom creates a new DNG file in the background. While the new file is still being created, you can already do something else. Here's our interim result. Lightroom created the new DNG file. You can regard it as a new RAW file containing the full dynamic range of all single shots you had selected before. You get heaps of latitude for your tonal corrections. So now you refine this new image in Lightroom's Develop section. That was an overview of the procedure. And here are some more practical tips. These icons show that I had already contrast corrected the individual files in Lightroom. Now, if you start an HDR or a panorama in Lightroom, the program will simply ignore most of your existing adjustments. So you don't have to reset your develop settings. The newly created DNG file needs a lot of disk space. Lightroom does not show file sizes. So for the moment let's switch to Bridge, the image browser connected to Photoshop. Here you see. The original RAW files need around 9 or 10 megabytes in the DNG file format. But the new DNG result needs around 44 megabytes with almost identical pixel count. And by the way, you can also start your HDR procedure with a string of JPEG files. But the resulting file will be DNG to capture the full dynamic range. Let's assume you have a big folder full of HDR series and you created some HDR results with Lightroom. Now you want to see only the results, perhaps to delete these new DNG files after some experimenting. Then you search for HDR as part of the file name. The reason is here. Lightroom attaches the phrase HDR to the names of the newly created files. So you click on text here and you type HDR. Now you see only the newly created files. Obviously this works best if the original files are not called HDR already. Should Lightroom not display the file name at all, press the letter J once or twice like I do now. If you wish to create an HDR file fast without even seeing the dialog box, select the HDR command while pressing the shift key. Now you know the new HDR command in Lightroom 6 and my name is Heiko Neumeyer.